Now let's get to some international updates. Uh, wherein a tweet has come forward from US President Joe Biden's side. Uh, this, of course, coming in against Russia. He said, and I quote, one year ago, the world was bracing for the fall of Kyiv. I just visited and I can report that Kyiv stands strong. Kyiv stands proud and tall. And most importantly, Kyiv stands free. Putin thought uh, uh, autocrats like himself were tough and the leaders of democracy soft. Then he met the iron will of Ukraine, America and nations everywhere. Uh, nations that refuse to accept a world governed by fear and force. A dictator bent on rebuilding an empire will never be able to erase the people's love for liberty. Brutality will never grind down the will to be free. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia. Never. Well, that's some strong words coming in from US President Sain. Uh, coming to you, Rishabh, on this. Good morning. Uh, this is, of course, coming in even as Russia has suspended the nuclear pact with the United States. However, Joe Biden seems to be very much at and reiterating his support for Ukraine. Rishabh. So if you see, uh, you know, Joe Biden, uh, this was a reply to uh, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia's speech, where he said that it was the West who started the war. But, uh, you know, Joe Biden, who made a surprise visit to Kyiv uh, just a day before yesterday, was adamant and said that Ukraine will never lose, never ever. Retaliating that West will stand by Ukraine, whatever the situation be. So now, you know, the Ukraine has become the major flashpoint, and I believe this is the first flashpoint post Syria, uh, you know, uh, in uh, Central Asia or West Asia. And, uh, and now, uh, be it U.S. or be it Russia, none of them are ready to back down. Remember, uh, Putin also, uh, you know, announced that in the last major nuclear treaty with U.S. Russia is pulling back from. So now, Russia and U.S. are not in any nuclear treaty as well. So both Russia and uh, U.S. are. They haven't started offensive yet, but they are sounding offensive for sure. Be it Putin, be it Joe Biden, both are, by the virtue of word, hmm. claiming and that they will not let the other one. Yes, and also Russia, but Russia on the other hand, doesn't seem to be bowing down anytime soon. And there, there doesn't seem like uh, they are, of course, going to do so even in the near future because Putin has clearly threatened uh, to resume the nuclear test as well. And he has also blamed the United States uh, for turning the Ukraine war into a global conflict. See, what started uh, as an expansion move for Vladimir Putin last year has now become the ego issue uh, for the leader. If they do not get anything in Ukraine, it will dent the, you know, the muscle man, strong man um, image of Vladimir Putin back home as well. Remember, in Russia, Putin is seen as someone who cannot be defeated. But if uh, the way Russia has not been able to advance in Ukraine even after one year and they have lost on many fronts, if Putin back down from here, his uh, future in domestic politics of Russia will definitely be dented. And that's the reason Putin is not ready to back down. And for, the, uh, for that matter, the United States, after having a, you know unceremonial exit from Afghanistan, a, do not want to get into Ukrainian crisis directly, but also understand that if they do not actually help Ukraine, Joe Biden and Democrats back home in the U.S. also will face the backlash. Right. So U.S. and uh, Russia continue to be at loggerheads with uh, Biden declaring unwavering support uh, for Kyiv and a commitment to bolstering NATO's eastern flank facing Russia while also rejecting Moscow's contention that uh, the West was planning to attack Russia. Well, thank you, Russia, for sharing all those details. But let's shift our focus to